Hello, folks. My name is Ed Lima, and I am a solutions architect with AWS based out of the beautiful Melbourne in Australia. Hope you're having a great day so far. Thank you for joining us today. This is supercharging applications with GraphQL and AWS AppSync. If I were to sum up this session in one sentence, I'd say we're here to talk about the new philosophy for building backend APIs. The current golden, golden standard for APIs is almost 20 years old and has some limitations. However, it is tried, tested, and it has very good and well-established design and architectural patterns that are widely adopted. It won't go away anytime soon, and there are still very good reasons to use it. We will talk about an alternative API technology optimized for performance and flexibility that is agnostic of underlying data sources and also allows for rapid prototyping and iteration. We will also talk about a very exciting AWS service that was released recently and takes full advantage of this next generation API technology to make it easy building collaborative mobile and web applications that deliver responsive and enhanced user experiences. Finally, we will end the session with a little demo that showcases different concepts and very cool features. When building web and mobile apps, developers face different challenges in managing application data. Data requirements vary across different devices and become exponentially harder when multiple users share data. Other than that, users want instant access to their content and want to have access to their data when they're offline. Not only that, but also they want the data to be automatically synchronized in the background when the network becomes available again. What if you're a client or front-end developer? How to make it easier to manage the data without learning back-end or distributed systems concepts? How can we address all these challenges? Before we start, let's first discuss how traditional data fetching works. Let's imagine I have a blog application backed by a REST API. If my client needs to access a list of blog posts, I have to make an API call to a specific endpoint posts. The API will return IDs for the posts. If I need data about the specific post, I have to use the ID I just retrieved and call another endpoint to get information about the post using the post info endpoint, for instance. Maybe I need to now make a third call to get data about posts by author, so on, so forth. As my data requirements get more specific, I need to create different endpoints and customize them accordingly. You can imagine it won't scale well as the API gets more complex with more endpoints. It becomes hard to manage. There are some advantages to it. REST is a true and tested API technology with established architectural patterns and it's based on standard HTTP calls. However, if you need to build relationships between those endpoints, or if you need to query the data dynamically, or implement ordering and pagination, or get real-time notifications when data changes, you need to develop it yourself on the back end. REST won't support any of these features out of the box. Is there a better way? Well, as a matter of fact, there is, and it's called GraphQL. GraphQL was created in 2012 by Facebook and open sourced in 2015. Now it is an open standard. Basically, if you use Facebook since 2012, you've been making GraphQL calls for years. The idea behind the development of GraphQL was to simplify data needs for both client product developers and server-side engineers, regardless of what languages they're using in either environment, rethinking data fetching from the perspective of product designers and developers. Companies such as Twitter, GitHub, Pinterest, and many others with a large amount of users are also using GraphQL in production at scale. But what is GraphQL? GraphQL, as the name describes it, is a data query language for APIs. It is also a runtime to fulfill those queries. It is very important to notice GraphQL is not a graph database. If you want to learn more about graph databases, I suggest you take a look at our new service, Amazon Neptune. GraphQL is expressed as a declarative language for requesting data from your application's backends. It uses a type system that allows you to understand data requirements and get meaningful error messages, making it easy to use and prototype. 
GraphQL is able to get data from many resources in a single request, allowing clients to receive the data they ask for. Nothing more, nothing less. It also has an interesting feature called introspection that allows to query the GraphQL schema to understand the data format and also helps to document your API. But I believe a picture is better than words to describe one of the main advantages of GraphQL. Let's go back to your example, a blog post application. In order to fetch data to populate my front-end user interface, I need to make a call and get the list of posts and post IDs. Then use one or more IDs to retrieve comments, so I need to make a second call. Then if I need to get information about the authors, I need to make another API call to a third endpoint. In order to get the data that I needed, I had to make three API calls because I was either overfetching or underfetching data. With GraphQL, I only have one endpoint and I only need to make one single API call. The data is retrieved from multiple data sources automatically for me. And these data sources can be anything, SQL, NoSQL, HTTP, it doesn't matter. GraphQL supports three types of operations, queries to read data, mutations to write or update data, and subscriptions that are specifically linked to mutations and allow to receive data in real time whenever data is changed or updated. Now let's take a look at a more detailed example. Let's imagine we have a simple event tracking app. The first step is to create a GraphQL schema. We define our schema with an event type that has specific properties such as ID, name, when and where the event is going to take place. We also define a query operation to retrieve the data about events from the backend. The query now invokes the query operation to retrieve the data. However, it only needs the ID and the name of the event. Notice it doesn't require any other data. As soon as the operation takes place, the client that gets the data as requested. But what if now the client needs to know when the event is going to take place? Well, it just needs to update the query and call the GraphQL API again. GraphQL allows to get exactly the data required, required and whenever it is required. No overfetching and no underfetching. There is only one endpoint and there is no need to change anything at the back end or create separate endpoints. The client defines the data and the back end is optimized to provide only what the client needs. So until last year, I used to hear a lot from customers. GraphQL sounds great and I want to run my own GraphQL server on AWS. Well, let's stop right there. First of all, servers, they are so 2014, aren't they? And when you talk about servers, you have to think about installing, patching, configuring, deploying. And if you're serious about it, then you worry about high availability and auto scaling. Lots of work and lots of undifferentiated heavy lifting. You should be focusing on your application and your business differentiators and not the infrastructure to run your applications. The last time we spent and on infrastructure maintenance and operations, the more time you can focus on new features and improving your application to speed up business outcomes. And that's why we released AWS App Sync last rain event. The service just recently graduated from preview to GA last month, and it is also currently available in Sydney region for ANZ customers. App Sync is a managed serverless GraphQL service perfect for interacting with application data. It connects to resources in your own AWS account, allowing you to make your data available in real time or offline. As it supports AWS Lambda, our awesome serverless compute service as a source, you can use AppSync as a GraphQL facade for any AWS service through Lambda. It also allows you to perform conflict detection and resolution in the cloud instead of doing it in the client. AppSync integrates with AWS Identity Access and Management, Cognito uses the pools, and you can use API keys, providing really powerful options to secure your API. There is also a new feature recently released. You can use external OpenID Connect providers to authenticate and authorize your GraphQL calls. But how does it work? Well, it's very easy to get started. You just need to upload your GraphQL schema, fully compliant with the open source spec. 
Alternatively, if you don't know much about GraphQL schemas, there's a cool feature where you can just point app sync to an existing DynamoDB table, and it will automatically create a GraphQL schema based on the, on the existing table attributes. With the schema in place, you can connect your data sources to AppSync using what you call resolvers. We currently support Amazon DynamoDB, our NoSQL managed database service, Amazon Elasticsearch, our managed Elasticsearch service, or AWS Lambda's data sources. And that's it. We're all set to start making GraphQL API calls. AppSync will update data in real time and manage connections when the client is offline. In a good, usual AWS serverless service fashion, AppSync is inherently highly available and scales automatically according to demand. You can easily add geospatial search features to your application powered by Elasticsearch via the GraphQL API and make the data available in real time for users. AppSync supports all sorts of clients in all, all screen sizes, be it native mobile or web clients. Since it is a GraphQL managed service, fully compliant with the GraphQL spec, clients receive the data they ask for. Nothing more, nothing less. You can retrieve data from multiple data sources in a single request. In our demo later on, we use four DynamoDB tables. Another benefit from GraphQL, introspection and documentation out of the box, allowing clients to query the GraphQL schema, which also helps to document your data and the format it needs to be accessed on. We support React Native, Android, iOS, and JavaScript in general. Our SDK integrates with the widely used open source Apollo GraphQL client. Since our SDK is also open source, it allows the Apollo team and our AppSync service team to contribute to each other's projects on GitHub. It's the beauty of open source. AppSync also allows write through mutations with optimistic UI, providing a better user experience. What does that mean? Basically, it allows the front end it should be updated optimistically first, assuming the server will be updated right after that. This is very useful in offline scenarios, as the user will see the interface updated regardless of the connection. In any situation or network state, real-time conflict resolution and offline capabilities take care of data consistency. With AppSync, you can mix and match data sources and GraphQL types. Let's say we have a DynamoDB and Elasticsearch on, in our backend. I can have a search query ranging from Elasticsearch and a list query reading from DynamoDB. If I need to update my data in Dynamo, I can use a mutation. Since I own the backend resources, I can then use DynamoDB streams hooked up to a Lambda function to keep my data on DynamoDB synchronized with Elasticsearch. In this scenario, I have a very powerful, flexible, resilient, and scalable backend where my client can read, write, and also perform full text search on data very easily and very fast. Best of all, the whole backend is managed by AWS, and you don't have to worry about any maintenance tasks. Now let's talk about real time. Before AppSync, in order to have a capable real time application, you needed to have a fleet of web servers, a cluster of PubSub servers, maybe a Redis cluster, and a fleet of WebSocket servers. When you talk about a fleet or a cluster, we also have to take into consideration installing, configuring, patching, maintaining, automating, high availability, and auto-scaling all of them. That's lots of work in and on itself, just before you can get started with your app development. With AppSync, we remove all that undifferentiated heavy lifting, allowing you to have a fully managed, highly available, and scalable GraphQL API endpoint in minutes. You can start prototyping and developing our application very easily straight away. We do real-time in AppSync taking advantage of GraphQL subscriptions using MQTT over WebSockets. For those who don't know MQTT, it's a very lightweight and fast PubSub protocol. Best of all, you don't need to manage those WebSocket connections. AppSync does all of that for you. Basically, when your client invokes a subscription operation, AppSync will return the WebSocket URL and the connection payload. The client will then call the URL using a secure WebSocket connection that will remain connected to your backend. Another very important feature in AppSync is the use of request and response mapping templates. 
you can use them to modify the data before and after it reaches your backend. When the client invokes a GraphQL query mutation or subscription, you can use a VTL or Velocity template to modify the query before it gets to the data source. Maybe you need to add specific parameters or use utility helpers to validate the payload, creating identifiers or validating conditions before reaching the backend. The enriched, modified and validated request then reaches the data source to perform the operation. And after the operation takes place in the data source, you can also have a response template to modify the data on the way back to the client. Map te mapping templates also allow a very important capability, fine grain access control. When the user is authenticated by a Cognito user pool or an external OpenID Connect provider, for example, a JWT token is sent to app sync with the request. You can add conditional checks in the request mapping template to authorize access based on different requirements before the operation is executed at the data source. For example, you can have simple checks where only users in certain groups can perform actions by using a simple if-else statement. Or you can have advanced scenarios with additional logic where only specific users or groups can perform actions. It's, a, it's all very customizable and flexible using your own VTL code. Now let's talk about conflict resolution. Imagine we have a document sharing application. Our use Jane creates a document. However, Jane has to jump on a plane and goes offline. And Jane keeps working on the document in the plane while offline. John, who is back at the office, starts updating the document with some useful information and does it one more time, creating a version three of the document. Jane then arrives at her destination and goes back online again. With AppSync, you can configure your application in such a way that a new version four of the document is created where all the updates are committed. This is done using mapping templates as well, where you can configure different conflict resolution strategies. Client wins, server wins, silent reject, but most importantly, you can create a Lambda function with your own conflict resolution logic for any custom requirements. It's great. AppSync also allows support for complex objects. There's a helper that converts GraphQL queries and mutations by using custom types, S3 object and S3 object input. This makes it easy to store content, such as images or video with GraphQL. It creates an S3 link, which is a persistent JSON structure in DynamoDB with a reference pointer to Amazon S3. The object can be directly uploaded or downloaded using the pointer address to reach S3, our managed object store service. We have a very handy sample app available on GitHub that you can easily clone and deploy in minutes to test its functionality. The link is available on screen. Feel free to clone. Moving on to offline support. AppSync offline capabilities take advantage of different local storage mediums to store data while the client is disconnected depending on the type of client you're using. Browser local storage for web clients, a sync storage for React Native or SQLite on native platforms. You can preload the database as well as configure the offline behavior to send data over Wi-Fi or using Wi-Fi and cellular. AppSync was released back in November at reInvent, and the service team has been on, absolute, on an absolutely incredible and fantastic pace of innovation, releasing new features nonstop every couple of weeks, such as local pub sub resolvers where you don't actually need a data source, unions, interfaces, custom headers, as well as expansion to different regions, including Sydney. I'm not sure if me annoying them with phone calls and spamming their mailboxes had anything to do with the Sydney release, though. But with GA last month, it couldn't be different. We had some very exciting new features implemented as part of the general availability release, such as CloudWatch support, CloudFormation support, subscription resolvers, HIPAA compliance. Let's take a closer look at some of these features. Now at the AppSync console, very similar to what can be done with Lambda these days, you can create a use and use mock context objects locally for testing purposes. 
Uh, I'm having some issues here with my prepared demo, but let's go back to the slides. Uh, you can also access CloudWatch logs related to the test call from the AppSync GraphQL ID in the console and see useful information to troubleshoot any issues. Basically, you can test and view logs in the same place without even leaving the AppSync console now. Or you can easily click View and CloudWatch link to see all the API calls in the CloudWatch console. AppSync resolvers can now make use of DynamoDB batch operations that span one or more tables in a region. This allows you to choose a list of keys in a single query, read records in multiple tables, write re records in bulk to multiple tables, and conditionally write or delete related records across multiple tables. It's an incredible feature. It makes it even easier to run batch operations in Dynamo. The great AWS Simplify JavaScript library and the AWS Mobile CLI now also support AppSync. It means web and React Native developers can now easily integrate multiple AWS data sources in their apps via AWS AppSync and use real-time data synchronization capabilities in their apps using the new GraphQL feature of the API category in AWS Simplify. Amplify is a very powerful library from the, for the front, front end, and when used in conjunction with the AWS Mobile CLI, you can have your backend resources such as analytics, file hosting, content delivery network, and authentication deployed and configured for you using one or two commands in a couple of minutes. For instance, recently with the AWS Amplify UI component in the mobile CLI, I was able to create a React web application with Cognito multi-factor authentication and an S3 private picture album with 20 line, 29 lines of code in less than 10 minutes. These powerful tools allow to streamline and speed up back-end and front-end development, making it even easier to develop, to develop on AWS. Now with AWS AppSync support, it gets even better. But now let's address the elephant in the room, shall we? We talked about REST APIs and some limitations, and we talked about how GraphQL solves some of those problems. We have a fantastic REST API service called API Gateway, and now we have an also fantastic GraphQL API service called AppSync. Is this a matter of REST versus GraphQL, API Gateway versus AppSync? Well, it shouldn't be. It's a matter of what's the best tool for the job. Why not use both of them? REST is not going anywhere and has been a truly tried and tested gold standard for many years with very good architectural patterns. If you have a simple API with few endpoints, REST is perfectly fine. Use API Gateway. However, if you have complex data requirements or you need real-time and offline capabilities, AppSync is here for you. Both AppSync and API Gateway are fantastic and very powerful tools for your developer toolbox. But now, enough talking. Let's see it in action for a couple of demos. I developed a chat application with a friend and fellow Amazonian in the United States across time zones and continents, and it's now available on GitHub. We also wrote a companion blog post explaining the app, its components, and how it takes advantage of nifty app sync features. Feel free to clone and try in your own AWS account. Thanks to CloudFormation and the mobile CLI, it takes only a couple of minutes to configure and deploy. The app is called ChatQL. It is also a progressive web app. What's the best way to quickly demonstrate real-time capabilities? A chat application fits the bill perfectly. We have a Cognito user pools onboarding and authenticating our users. A valid user receives a JWT token, which is sent to AppSync to identify and authorize the user. AppSync then uses resolvers to send and retrieve data to four different DynamoDB tables that sort out about users, conversations, and messages. This is the high-level overview of the app's data model. A graph representation can help us understand how we need to store and relate data. The nodes represent the data you want to store. The edges represent connections, relations, or associations between the data. GraphQL allows to create relations between the data types, which means relations between NoSQL databases. This is incredibly powerful. Putting aside all the other great features, if anything else, AppSync becomes an amazing logic layer enhancing DynamoDB. 
But now let's uh, let's go to the demo. Uh, let me try to reopen my mobile. I have my mobile here with me. Uh, let's see if the demo gods, gods are with us today. Uh, yes, it's back. Okay, great. Okay, so here I have my application. I have my application on my on a web browser and I have my progressive web app. So as you can see, as a progressive web app, it also installs uh, on my app drawer and it looks and behaves like a normal mobile app. So I have a user here, it's called Mate. And I have a user on my mobile, it's called Dude. So let me sign in with both users. And they, they have this conversation that's going on for weeks, right? They're best friends. So you can send messages from, uh, from uh, one user to the other. And I can go here on my mobile app and also send a message back. As you can see, you have messages going back and forth. If I take a look here at the network tab of my browser, I can can see here this is basically a, a GraphQL uh, message and here I have the data but you know those guys are best friends and they have like thousands of messages if I were to retrieve those messages at once that would affect performance significantly significantly so take a look here at the end of my uh, networking calls as I start scrolling up I'm making more calls providing that very nice uh, infinite scrolling capability to my UI. And basically what I'm using here is what we call uh, connections in GraphQL, which is built-in support for pagination. I'm just uh, retrieving uh, 10 messages at a time. So, and I have a token that tells me where my next 10 messages are, and I just can come here and, and check my messages back and forth. But now uh, let's say I need to go offline or I'm going on a plane or something like that. So um, let's go offline here. So uh, I'm gonna click this offline button and I'm gonna send an offline message. So as you can see, I'm not sending any network calls and I didn't get the message on my mobile device. So if I take a look here at the at the UI itself, I have those green check marks that basically tell my user that message was sent successfully. If this check mark's gray, it basically tells me that this is an offline message. If I go back online again, so let's go back online. So my uh, mobile just received the message and I sent a message here. I can try again, just to confirm. And the message was just received. But let's take a look at the back end now. Uh, also, check here my mobile. So, this is the AppSync console. I have a couple of APIs. You can easily create an API on AppSync, and you can use a sample schema. The sample schema going to create an event application and it's going to create a couple of data, uh, DynamoDB tables at the back end for you to start testing and prototyping. But let's actually check the chat application, right? So my chat application, AppSync gives me a GraphQL endpoint. I have specific settings here where I define my security authorization types. I have a user pool authenticating my users. And here I have uh, data sources. Right, I have four different DynamoDB tables. Uh, I also have my schema here. It's my uh, GraphQL schema. And my schema has specific types, but also has uh, specific operations assigned to it. So I have here queries and mutations. So let's take a look here at 
uh, at the resolver. So resolvers are associated with those operations. And basically here, I define my data source, which is one of my tables, and I have my VTL template here, where I can basically uh, uh, transform or, or verify some data. And here is also where I, I create my conflict resolution strategies, and I configure my conflict resolution strategies. I can also have a response mapping template that transforms the data back. But my favorite part of the, the AppSync console, it has a GraphQL IDE built in. So I can log in with my user pool. So let me go back to my user pool here. I have a client ID. I can just copy this and paste here. I have my username, dude. It's the same user I'm logged in on my mobile. And uh, the great thing about having my app on GitHub, so if you go to the app sync page where you have resources, you'll be able to access the Angular chat app. And the great thing in the interest of time, I can just uh, copy my, uh, my GraphQL, my GraphQL queries annotations. So we can do some more demos later. So I have my GraphQL folder here, I have all my mutations and queries. So let's get any information about the user I'm logged in with. So I'm just gonna copy this now. And go to the console. And just, I received the data about uh, my IDs and username if it's registered. What if I just wanna get my IDs, no, nothing else? It's very easy with GraphQL, I just get what I need or because I can, uh, I can uh, uh, also use the username here. I'm oh, sorry, no, I think it's username. I can just get my, uh, my documentation. Sorry, I can just get the results here. Uh, let's go back. Here. Uh, so, but now let's do some changes. Let's run some uh, some mutations, right? So I have a mutation here. Here I have my user. I'm just going to copy this. Uh, let me remove this part, and I'm going to change the username to add. So uh, on my UI here on my mobile device, uh, I added a, a little UI component that tells me the username. And I, I hook that UI component to a subscription. So if I, 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 query, I, I issue this mutation to change my username, just notice my UI just changed in real time as well. And I can go to my, uh, to my DynamoDB table. You see the username is changed. Let's, Let's change it back to dude, or else maid's gonna be really upset. So again, change in real time. If I go to my DynamoDB table here in the back end, it's changed. But let's take a look at some other very interesting uh, um, capabilities in AppSync. Let's create a test API here. So then let's use an empty schema. Uh, I'm going to select this. And uh, let's let's say we have a car API, right? So let's just change this to car, car here. I have a car make and maybe I'll add a car caller as a string. So I can save my schema. Uh, sorry, it has to be car here. I can save my schema. So I have a valid schema, but I don't have a backend yet, so I don't have databases. So I can create those resources directly from the console. 
So let's create, uh, so it's my type, I define a type car. So I can create a DynamoDB table here where I specify the primary key and I can add specific indexes if I need to, right? But the best thing is uh, AppSync actually extends my, my schema and add all of that uh, to my schema to optimize uh, and basically make it a, a, a more complete API for me. So I'm just, it's just creating the DynamoDB tables here. Might take a couple of seconds. Also going to create some resolvers, but there you go. So now I can start making queries to my newly created, back, created backend. So let's create a mutation here. And as you can see, this is because of the because of the, the documentation built in with AppSync. So I can have access to all my schema here and how I, I need to make those uh, those uh, comments or mutations or queries. So create here, create car, it auto completes for me. So I just use an input. Uh, let's say I want an ID of one, make Let's make it a uh, Holden and color green. Uh, and I want it to return to me uh, the ID and the make. Okay, so data was created for me. Uh, let's create another car, maybe a Ford and the color red and maybe a third car uh, vw and the color black uh, let's check my dynamodb here uh, just oh i have a car table there created already so i can come here and you can see my items which is created for me right uh, uh, I want to query those guys now. So let's make a query list cars. List cars. And I want some items there. Right? I want to list my cars by ID and make. So it's cool, it auto completes. So I guess the list of my car. So now I want also the color. So as you can see, I created a full API with, uh, with a highly scalable database without even leaving the AppSync console and without coding anything. I can quickly prototype my data here. But let's imagine here, I don't know anything about GraphQL. So I don't know how to create a schema or anything like that. So let's create another API, it's called Notes. Uh, I still, I get my endpoint here. So I have a schema, it's empty. I don't know anything about the graphical schemas. However, I do have a DynamoDB table called uh, Notes. So I can uh, just select my table. It's on EP Office 2 my table name notes, uh, just create a new role, but there's a little check mark here, automatically generate a GraphQL schema. Yeah, I want that. I don't know much about GraphQL. Someone told me it's good. So I also going to add here another, uh, uh, another attribute that I have on my table because this is an unknown key attribute, right? So I'm just gonna click create. It's going to connect connect to my existing DynamoDB table and basically create all the wiring to enable it to be accessed via GraphQL. So I have my schema here, but now let's make some queries, shall we? I want to take a look at my notes. So uh, let's query here, uh, list notes, 
and I want some items. Uh, let's give me the note ID, the user ID, and the note itself. So if I issue my query, I get all my notes from the back end instantaneously. What if I want to add pagination? So let's add here. Just want my first four notes. And I want to add my token here. So I get four notes and I get a token that I can refer whenever I need to get the next four notes. Uh, so again, you notice I didn't have to leave the console. The developer onboarding experience, it's a very nice experience. You can get up and running really quickly and you can start prototyping and your backend is ready in a matter of minutes. But let's go back to the slides. I'd like to share some takeaways from my experience using GraphQL and AppSync. Don't boil the ocean. Start small, test, try, and iterate so you can understand the concepts. Not every single UI component needs to be real-time from the get-go or need complex conflict, conflict resolution strategies. Use UI indicators to let your users know they're offline so they can relax and trust the application will manage the connection automatically and send the data when they're back online. Take advantage of the powerful built-in GraphQL capabilities such as pagination and relations in NoSQL. It's very important to provide a good user experience to your users so they keep engaged and coming back to your app. AppSync checks lots of boxes to make it easy and seamless. So I'd like to make a challenge. Either when you finish watching this webinar or when you get home tonight, choose one of our sample apps and deploy AppSync in your own account to get started and try yourself all of these awesome and powerful features. Then start to think about how you can use them to supercharge your own applications. Go build. AppSync makes it really easy to develop and supercharge your application with GraphQL. Uh, on, on other good news, we're also returning with our popular dev launch series across six cities in, uh, in Australia and New Zealand. Make sure you register and come over for some great insights on how to apply the 12 factors to serverless applications. And before I end up today, I just uh, want to uh, to to ask you uh, your feedback. It's very important for us. We want to hear uh, if you enjoy the session, if you want to see uh, and, and have more of those webinars and what sort of, um, of use cases and services you want to hear more about. Uh, it's very important for us. So please take some time to fill up the survey and, and let us know how it goes. Thank you very much.
Uh, yeah, I think we have time for, for some questions. Uh, so let me address some of the, the questions here. So does AppSync work well with relational data like MySQL? Absolutely, you can uh, basically can connect GraphQL with anything. So if you have an RDS uh, uh, database, you can use a Lambda uh, data source on AppSync to connect your database and get SQL data in your, uh, in your uh, API. Uh, is it possible to use OAuth providers like Google, Facebook? Uh, so now we support OpenID Connect providers. So you, as long as your provider is an OpenID Connect provider, you can use the tokens to uh, to basically uh, um, uh, authorize and access to your your backend. Uh, let me see what are the questions here. I have both IPA Gateway and AppSync. Which one should choose? Uh, well, again, it's the best tool for the job kind of thing, right? So uh, uh, API Gateway is great, uh, and AppSync is also a great graphical tool. So again, if you need, uh, if you have complex data, uh, data requirements, if you have offline real-time capability, you can use GraphQL. Uh, depending on how many endpoints you have on your API, REST API, well, we should definitely use uh, API Gator. They're, they're both amazing services. Uh, they are not uh, uh, mutually exclusive. So you can have parts of your application using API Gator, parts of your application using AppSync. It's not a problem at all. It's just more tools for your developer toolbox. Uh, does AppSync work with other uh, database types other than DynamoDB. Uh, for now, we support DynamoDB and Elasticsearch directly. For other uh, DB types, you have to use Lambda as a proxy. Can we use Python as coding language of AppSync? Uh, well, as long as you have a GraphQL client in your Python uh, uh, application, there is no problem at all. You just need a GraphQL client to issue those GraphQL calls. Uh, you can also use Lambda with Python, the backend is not a problem at all. Uh, how would you use uh, existing GraphQL API from EC2 Lambda? Uh, again, you can use a Lambda proxy there and connect. Uh, is it possible to run AppSync locally? Uh, no, at the moment that's not possible, but uh, uh, it might come in a future release, you never know. Uh, how do you limit the query result by specifying certain conditions and filtering? So basically, you need to use a mapping template with the resolver and then use a VTL to uh, to basically create specific conditions of filters. You can use if else statements, you can use for loops, anything that you need. Uh, and I think that's all folks. And uh, again, uh, please uh, Take a look at the Dev Lounge um, registration link. You can access there and register today. Uh, also, you're going to make these slides and the and the recording of the webinar available, so people can can access later. And well, thank you very much for spending lunch time with us. Have a great day.